For some people, the whole world is simply a stage. They want to be admired, wanted, loved, to be famous. For their passion, they are ready to do anything. Lola Montez is a unique character. And let's not forget we're talking about one of the first celebrities in history. It is the art of seduction and deception which can eventually unhinge a seemingly established world. She was a, a very seductive woman. This is the story of a seductive woman who was able to snare every man by making them fall under her spell. A woman who traveled the globe, who wanted to experience everything that life had to offer. One of the most extraordinary women of her time. She brought a king to abdicate. That was what made her a key historical figure. She took control of her own life to be the person that she wanted to be. Mary! Are you interested in me? No, not me personally. The Broadway theater wants me to write a play about you. But unfortunately, not everything is in here. <laughs> to be quite honest, most of it, I have to admit, after reading it, is fabricated rubbish that any dancer from Europe could have fantasized about. I think your profession is somehow different. Am I right? You're absolutely right. There are countless young women out there who can dance, but I'm unique. You're unique? Your dubious reputation is? She's interesting because she's a study in what a woman could accomplish in the mid-19th century, despite all the social restrictions. <laughs> Do you have a light? You can't smoke here. It's forbidden in the theater. <sighs> Watch this. I'm smoking. Lola never let herself be restricted by the expectations of her society. As a matter of fact, she specialized in outraging uh, the society in which she lived a good part of the time. And I think she enjoyed that. <laughs> May I? So, what do you want to know? Okay, let's start with your lovers. Or with your first husband, if you'd like. There isn't much to say. But in your memoirs, you describe in detail how you chose to elope with a lieutenant rather than marry that rich old man your mother had found for you. I think the relationship with the mother defined the character and personality of the grown-up Lola Montez and also her relationships with men. We're talking about a child who, at two years old, 
has to leave her home in Ireland and has to travel with her mother and father, an officer of the British East India Company, all the way to Calcutta. Shortly after their arrival, her father dies because of a fever. Her mother remarries. But unfortunately, the mother's main concern is her social life, and Lola becomes a hindrance. She was growing up in India, and her story is that she was allowed to grow up more or less like a wild animal, that she had an Indian nursemaid who took care of her, but that she was more or less neglected by her mother. Her mother neglects her. And let's not forget that when Lola is five, her mother sends her to a boarding school in Bath, England, and they don't see each other for 11 years. If you were 16, would you choose a 60-year-old? My mother cared about money, not my happiness. I was naive enough to think I could save myself from one husband by having another. She didn't see her mother again until she was almost 16 years old. Well, Lola throughout her life uh, disliked her mother. She had a very difficult relationship with her mother. She blamed all of what she was willing to accept as negative characteristics uh, that she had as coming from her mother. At the age of 16, Eliza Gilbert, she later assumed the name of Lola Montez, already had a wild biography behind her. She married her mother's lover, a British officer. Then she returned to India with him as Eliza James. On the journey back to England, she cheated on her husband and was divorced due to adultery. The 21-year-old woman comes to a crucial turning point in her life during a trip to Spain. She became Lola Montez because she realized that in the wake of the divorce, being a woman who had been divorced for adultery, that she was socially dead, that she had no future. And so Eliza James died and Lola Montez was born and made up a complete biography for herself, which she varied at regular times to fit whatever new evidence had arisen. All right, let's talk about Maria Dolores de Boris y Montez, known as Lola Montez. Which Lola is that? The dancer? The seducer? <laughs> the firebrand? The Bavarian countess who brought down a king? <laughs> How about the Lola Montez who could do whatever she wanted? You mean that one? Yes. I was and still am my own mistress. Sin embargo, as a result of assuming the personality of a ballerina or an exotic Spanish dancer, she was able to live endless adventures which were unthinkable for women in the 19th century. And I think somehow this Lola Montez character was for her a means of escape so she could become a free woman, owner of her own destiny, and ultimately live the life she wanted to. For the audience, Lola is the ideal embodiment of an exotic and seductive Spanish woman, although this success doesn't last long. Bravo! Bravo! That is the divorced Mrs. James. What? Whenever she encountered delicate situations, Lola reached out to influential men to help her out. We must leave London. At this time, Nicholas I of Russia was making a state visit to Berlin, and Lola was invited to give a performance. There was a major parade and review in the field south of Berlin that the Tsar and the king were to attend. Well, Lola later claimed that her horse had bolted, and it was inadvertent that she attempted to 
ride her horse into the imperial royal enclosure. And one of the gendarmes tried to stop her and grabbed at the reins of her horse. And Lola immediately with her riding uh, crop uh, struck him across the face. <laughs> oh my God, mistress. Your number with the whip in Berlin is even known here in America. An entire regiment fled. How nice. <laughs> oh, you're exaggerating. But as you can see, I'm a woman who can defend herself. Yes, the whip made me famous. But that wasn't the problem. She had trouble with authority at all levels, yes. Lola was taking on a role that was completely untypical for a woman of her time. To slap a man in public, and what's even worse, an officer, was an outrageous act for a woman. There had to be consequences. Madam, there's a court order for you. I am accused of physical assault? After that coarse boar insulted me for no reason? <sighs> never! I will never appear before the court! Whenever authority stood in her way, she had no problem attempting to seduce authority and was frequently successful in charming authority. But when uh, she couldn't charm authority, then she would result, resort to whatever means, including violence, that she thought would, would affect her purpose. The charge of contempt of court was a more serious offense. But it was then dismissed due to instructions from a higher power. Your expulsion from Prussia also came from a higher power. And this was not the only time that you were expelled from a country. No. But that is completely irrelevant for our play. We don't need a protagonist who consistently disappears from the stage. We need something different. Something... romantic. Her goal was to meet Franz Liszt, who at that time was, was unique in Western Europe in his acclaim that he was receiving. He really was the first great European superstar. And subsequently, Liszt and Lola were staying at the same hotel in Dresden. Lola Montes, Lola Montes had a long list of lovers. Among them, the composer Franz Liszt stands out. Their affair was brief, stormy, and very public. And when Liszt broke up with her, he gave her a recommendation letter for his friends in Paris. My dear friend, I recommend Miss Lola Montez as your dancer. She is always fresh, always vivid, and always very creative. She really is a poet the genie of grace and love. Your sincere friend, Franz Liszt. The sensitive and good-looking artist Franz Liszt is one of the most desirable men in Europe. Liszt has many affairs. And this muse is simply too demanding for the pianist. He decides to leave her, but not without first taking the necessary precautions. Take this. Franz! That will be enough to cover the expenses. Franz, let me out! And please, open the door in 12 hours. The lady will be more calmed by then. Franz, open the door, Franz! Franz, let me out, damn it! <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. 
<laughs> Listen to me! <laughs> After all, I finally got my recommendation letter. Mm. <laughs> and Franz Liszt said a lot of good things about me in that letter. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. But before you shoot me, let me backtrack. Have a nice life. We have not finished, Mr... Uh, Ware. Uh, uh, Charles Ware. We have not finished, Mr. Ware. Gracias a esta carta de recomendación, Thanks to this recommendation letter, when Lola Montez arrives in Paris, she realizes that she is welcomed into the Parisian Bohemian circle. A circle with personalities like Honoré de Balzac, Alexandre Dumas, and of course, Georges Sand. I think this was one of the happiest times of her life, because Paris is a global city in which she can be free. It's a city of freedom, in which she also lives one of the most authentic love stories. She falls in love. She's very committed to him. According to her, he was the love of her life. A very good-looking young man named Henri Dujarrier, co-owner of La Presse, one of the most important Parisian newspapers, and therefore a successful businessman. Lola is a member of the Parisian society and an admired exotic beauty who's by an important man's side. This happiness fosters envy from others, and Dujare must defend his honor in a duel. My dear Lola, when you read this, I'll be fighting with pistols. That's why I wanted to be alone last night, and I didn't see you this morning. I needed to rest and avoid having emotions, which I would have felt this morning upon seeing you. At 10 o'clock, it'll all be over. And I'll come to you. And embrace you. Unless... A thousand tender caresses, my dear Lola. My good little wife. Whom I love, and who will always be in my thoughts. It's a wonderful romantic story. You fall in love with a young woman, with a dynamic young, young uh, financier and newspaper editor, and then he's struck down in the prime of life in a duel. It's, it's romantic. And she may have believed he was the love of her life. After the death of Dujarrier, she finds herself in a precarious situation. On the one hand, she doesn't have the support of La Presse, the newspaper that was helping her. She no longer has Dujarrier's financial support. And she notices that his friends, Dujarrier's circle of friends, start pointing fingers at her and labeling her as a black widow. I loved that man. But I couldn't stay in Paris. And all of a sudden, she finds herself with her heart broken, and once again, she has to reinvent herself and start a new life somewhere else. Lola wanders aimlessly through Europe for over a year. She still causes scandals. She still has to find new opportunities to perform. 
Ultimately, she wants to find happiness in Vienna. However, the journey to get there is a long one. So, she decides to first stop in Munich because she knows that she can meet many gentlemen at Oktoberfest and therefore she can develop new relationships over there. And, well, nobody could have imagined that this change of plans would affect history. If Lola Montez goes down in history, it'll be because of her romantic two-year relationship with King Ludwig I of Bavaria. Your Majesty, Miss Montez is here. Your Majesty, I have been allowed to dance everywhere except for you here in Munich. Your Majesty is well known for your appreciation of art, and therefore I ask Your Majesty to support a Spanish dancer so she can perform her art here in Munich. And what do you want to perform for us? Your Majesty, I dance the Fandango and Bolero. Very well. I will instruct Baron von Fries, the director of our Royal Court Theater, to let you perform during the intervals. Go and report to him. Your Majesty enjoys the reputation of being a supporter of the arts, and therefore it would be good if Your Majesty could instruct the Director Fries to issue me an appropriate fee for my performance. And what would be an appropriate fee per performance, most gracious one? Half of the net earnings. I would be very grateful to Your Majesty. You seem to be very demanding. Well, all right. Sounds very good. I am also worth it. Your Majesty. He was 60 at the time Lola arrived, and mentally he was still very much erotically involved. Uh, and physically, possibly, too, but he saw 60 as a breaking point in life, that one is a vigorous man up to age 60. After age 60, it's all downhill. Dear Miss Montez, I don't wish to offend you with my questions, but I, if I'm not mistaken, um, I believe that the first meeting between you and the king was... Uh, uh, shall we say, <laughs> somewhat permissive? <sighs> Do you mean this? Uh, uh, what are you planning on doing? The story that at the first interview, which is most assuredly not true, she went to the king's desk, took a pair of scissors, and immediately cut her bodice down the front to demonstrate to the king that it's all real, Ludwig. My dear Mr. Ware, do you think that it was really like that? Ludwig was a real king, a man with manners. He always treated me with respect. And moreover, how could I have escaped from the residence? <laughs> <laughs> I get credit for a lot of things. And therefore, it is, and will be, a nice invented story. It's pure fantasy. <laughs> You're completely right, Miss Montez. Let's drink. To all the invented truths. And to great collaboration, Mr. Ware. He was depressed because he felt he would never be loved again. And Lola gave him a ready excuse to deny what he was afraid of. And he said, uh, he wrote to one of his friends, I'm like a volcano that was dormant and has suddenly erupted. <laughs> Ludwig 
Ludwig admires the beauty in women. He also makes it clear at his wedding to Teresa that without this abundance of beauty, his artist soul could not thrive. This royal womanizer has many affairs before meeting Lola Montez. But everything will be different with this young woman. The grace of this dancer moves him deeply. This does not go unnoticed by his court and Bavaria. After her dance at the theater, he immediately uh, ordered Steeler to paint her for the Gallery of Beauties, the Schönheits Gallery. And he wanted to be there for all the sittings. Majesty. Your Majesty. My esteemed stealer, this portrait must be a masterpiece. She is a beautiful, young, proud Spaniard and... That must be evident in this painting. Where are the flowers? The flowers for her hair. Miss Montez, lift your head a bit more. Don't forget the flowers. I'll come back tomorrow. During one of the sittings with Steeler, he inquired will you be leaving us here in Munich? And Lola supposedly said, no puedo dejar Munich. I can't leave Munich, she said, because there's someone here very dear to me. And that did it for Ludwig, I think. I think Ludwig said, she loves me. The king adored Spain his whole life, even though he had never been there. And Lola is the perfect embodiment of his yearning for Spain. Ludwig sees himself as an artist king, and beautiful women are his inspiration. He has 38 women, regardless of social class, immortalized in the Gallery of Beauties at the Nymphenburg Palace. She arrived in October. By early November, he had already granted her an annual uh, salary. She was on salary, and I think it was in early November that he wrote a codicil to his will leaving her a large sum of money and the most recent portrait of him that had been painted. So within a month, Ludwig was totally taken. I can rely on the king's word, can't I? Take care of you. I think it is love at first sight for the king, and I believe she sees in the king the father she never had. I say never had because she lost him at the age of two and became an orphan. Therefore, I believe, for her, this is more like a paternal relationship than a sexual one. There's no doubt that she didn't behave well with King Ludwig I of Bavaria. 
Uh, your Majesty. Uh... Oh, my dear Louis, your countrymen are real barbarians. I'm shunned everywhere I go. I go for a walk with my dog Turk, and they cross to the other side of the street. I go to the theater, and they change seats. No place lets me in. Not museums, balls, banquets, Louis. I can't take this any longer. My dear Lolita. I will make you a countess. And I am sure that after that, they will accept you and see the wonderful person that you are. And later on, he thought better of it. And there's a note that Ludwig made that he attempted to convince Lola that maybe she should come into a lower rank of nobility and that Countess was a bit much. And he made a note, Lola insists on being a Countess. No discussion. Uh, so he was trapped. A royal promise is sacred, even though it raises more objections from the government and his subjects against Lola's influence on the monarchy. The sinful romance is preached against from the pulpits of Munich's churches. Bavarians are furious. Everyone, not only in Bavaria, but also in Western Europe, saw this as a turning point in Bavarian politics. And that, as a consequence, affected the public perception of who she was and what kind of influence she had on Ludwig. But Lola is not only scheming. He looked dreadful, but that didn't bother me. I visited him every day through a secret passage. I should be left alone. But your majesty, will you still want to see your Lolita? Lola, I know I look awful. Nobody wants to see me, not even the queen. Well, they didn't want me to see you, but I will take care of you. My dear Lolita, you are such a wonderful person. Even though my subjects in Munich speak ill of you. I will visit you every day, regardless of what your subjects say about your Lolita. While I was taking care of Ludwig, the people of Munich were working on banishing me. They wanted me gone, although I'd done nothing to them. Ludwig became another person thanks to me. His politics also became more progressive because of me. Ah, oh, Miss Montez, you took away their beloved and cherished great king. That's why they're so angry. You should have adapted better. Instead, you caused chaos and scandals, for all I know. <laughs> chaos, scandals. They were angry because I'm a woman. Women, my dear Mr. Ware, are never forgiven, especially if they live the way they want. Ludwig had accepted that, but his subjects in Munich and those Jesuits didn't. Unfortunately, in this society, a woman was not allowed to have her own voice. And that's why, acting independently as a single woman, the way Lola Montez did, defending her behavior and being loud, causing scandals, smoking, all these things were not appropriate of women in the 19th century. And clearly that made Lola unacceptable according to this Bavarian society. Don't look. Lola knows Ludwig's weaknesses and how to bind himself to him. Now you may. Surprise, you will always have a part of me. Lola wants to be the king's official mistress. Something ambitious and impossible since Ludwig I doesn't share his power with anyone. In Versailles, there were politically influential mistresses more than 100 years ago. But in the 19th century bourgeois Bavaria, this is completely unacceptable. Ludwig's, Ludwig's earlier extramarital relationships were conducted in private. 
They were not public at all, and the women never appeared next to the king. So as long as his affairs were kept in private, society was okay with them, and therefore Queen Teresa also accepted this ongoing situation out of necessity. But with Lola Montez, she decided to use her power as the queen to show and to make it obvious that they're going through a family crisis. For example, she stopped talking to supporters of Lola Montez at the court, and she also started to distance herself from those dealing with Lola Montez. That meant that everyone had to think carefully whether they wanted to be around Lola Montez or to have a relationship with the queen. Lola officially bears the title of Countess of Lonsfeld. His Majesty is here. But the title on its own is insignificant for the Bavarian aristocracy. Ludwig, nobody has come. No one, no one, no one! They have all canceled. Your subjects in Munich will never accept me. They're doing everything to scare me away. Can't you see? They are awful, and they refuse to honor a countess, and have no shame disrespecting their king. Lolita. Hmm. Louise, when will Queen Teresa agree to see me? Lola, you must understand that this is not so easy for Teresa. Have some patience, please. But you are the king! She cannot refuse your request. All right, she will see you. <laughs> the case of Lola Montez once again made it very clear to everyone that in a constitutional state, there can be nobody who acts completely across the hierarchies. Who beyond the constitutional bodies and the senior civil service, beyond the court society, gains an influence over the monarch that makes him someone unpredictable. Just like it's happening everywhere in Europe, the Bavarian middle classes demand to have a voice in politics. In Munich, people go out to the streets. Their anger is primarily directed towards Lola, the whore must leave. The dancer protects herself with her own guard of students. They are mockingly known as the Lolo men. Rumors of secret orgies in Lola's palace are going around. King Ludwig looks like a wretched, deceived man. Lola Montez, God still on our side. You call people scoundrels, and you yourself are the biggest scoundrel. <laughs> You're poisoning the peace and order, tradition and good manners. You're a devil with no horns nor tail, but you possess all of the devil's tricks. <laughs> yes, and this is for you. I believe that, for a while, Ludwig didn't think this could have such a dramatic outcome. The evidence is that someone in January of 1847 offered Lola a very large bribe to leave Bavaria and never come back because uh, the conservative element saw that she was a malign influence on the king and that she was undermining not only their position, but also his position as king. <laughs> <laughs> they even tried bribery. No. <laughs> Someone offered me 50,000 florins per year to... What? ...leave Bavaria. <laughs> for the rest of my life. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> you were worth that much? Ah, uh, Miss Montez, why didn't you just take the money? Everyone would have been relieved. 
and it would have been so much easier for you. However, I have to say, my goodness, the fall of a king. What a spectacle. <laughs> uh, you men think that money controls everything, but I'm not that cheap. I perhaps don't have the most refined manners, but disappear for doing nothing wrong? Never. I was firmly set on staying in Munich, because poor Ludwig needed my support. They all conspired against me. The aristocracy, the Jesuits, the citizens, everyone. And I didn't even know what was going to happen. The crowd gathered, and it became obvious that the Barastrasse house was going to be stormed, that the crowd was coming in over the back wall. And Lola's reaction, this is a, the 11th of February, 1848, Lola's reaction was to go out into the courtyard, as she had in March of the previous year, and ridicule the mob and challenge them. The story is that she pounded her breast and said, here, here's where you should be throwing your stones. You missed. Can't you throw any better than that? Countess, Countess, you must leave Munich. It's extremely dangerous for you to be here. I'll hold the fort while I can. <sighs> I won't be driven out of my palace by a rabble of noisy scoundrels. What? What's going on? Countess, they're storming the palace. Ugh, nonsense. They wouldn't dare, and I can handle them. This would be temporary until everyone calms down. Your life's in danger. Who says that? You? I don't take orders from you. That is an order from the highest office. Ugh. Uh, no! Uh, Stop it! Let go of me! No! Put me down! Let go of me! No! They chased me out of the country like a criminal. The police escorted my carriage to the Swiss border. But that wasn't an order from Ludwig. And if it was, he didn't do it willingly. They put pressure on him. The following night, the king is forced to take action. Your Majesty? Your Majesty? The Duchess of Leuchtenberg wants to talk to you. She says that it's urgent. She wants to wait and until your majesty agrees to see her. In the middle of the night? <sighs> Take her into the reception room and tell her that I'm coming. <sighs> his sister and his prime minister are waiting for him. Burks, you're also here? So you've all conspired against me? You come in the middle of the Ludwig, night. Ludwig, listen. The situation is much too serious to talk about conspiracy. You must come to your senses. Ludwig refuses to believe how serious the liberal, democratic, and national powers are in Bavaria. Some demand co-determination and democratic elections. Others want a constitutional monarchy or even its abolition. Everyone insists on getting Lola expelled immediately and irrevocably from the country. Ludwig must accept in order to save the monarchy. He said, that's not why I became king. That's not the king I am. And he said, I, he said no one loves me here anymore. They just want me as a tool. And tragically, one of the main motivations was that he realized as king it would be extremely difficult for him to see Lola again. If he abdicated, he could go and live with Lola for a while, and he could see her again. And abdication would be the means of reuniting him with Lola. My dearest Lolita, to whom I'm so strongly attached. In this hour, I have abdicated voluntarily without having anyone suggest such a thing. Without the knowledge of the Council of Ministers, I've abdicated in the presence of the princes of my house. My son, Maximilian, fell to his knees and asked for my blessing. 
the five of us cried together. My plan is to go to Switzerland in April, to fall into your arms and live there with you. I feel well today. Since I made my declaration of abdication, I started to feel happy again. If he is with his Lolita then, he'll be happy. Your faithful, Louis. But what Ludwig didn't know was that Lola had already made other male acquaintances in Switzerland. Ludwig still holds on to his dream. It broke his heart. He tried multiple times to see Lola again and made detailed plans to meet Lola, which at the very last moment he decided to call off because it was simply too dangerous to the dynasty. Even the families against Ludwig the government threatens to reduce the appanage if he continues with his idea of seeing Lola. Your Majesty, the carriage is ready. Ludwig realizes that he cannot lead a new life as a private man. I am not a Majesty. Not anymore. He was deeply troubled, but then slowly his eyes became open to the fact that Lola had lied to him every step of the way. Not only had he been duped as a man, but he had, under totally false pretenses, given up his crown. Se arrepiente de cómo ha tratado. She regrets the way she treated King Ludwig I of Bavaria. She regrets, perhaps, living that sinful life. The best day of my life was when Ludwig took my hand in front of the assembled royal household and in front of everyone said, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to my best friend. That was the biggest compliment of my life. And I'll always think highly of Ludwig for that. And his money? You also thought highly of him because of it. You are nasty and unfair, Mr. Ware. I'm just asking you, Miss Montez. He supported you financially for a long time, and the whole world knew that you were not entirely innocent regarding his abdication. There were the circumstances the Jesuits, the people of Munich who rejected me in my way of living. I didn't want him to abdicate. He was the most honorable man I have ever met, and I... And you took advantage of that. You weren't always honest with him. In my own way, he was more than just a king to me. He was what I never had. A father. Ludwig was educated, knowledgeable, kind, and he treated me that way. I think your inner child took over your life. But instead of keeping him as a paternal friend, you ended up dismissing him. How shall I say it? Because of your nature. When one is really happy, one might not notice that something wonderful can suddenly change. I know that now. I'm not a child anymore. I have learned my lesson, Mr. Ware. I think she was a very independent woman, and she paid a high price for her independence. In the old world, there was no room for Lola Montez. Sell the remaining furniture and send me the money to New York. And this is for you to remember me by. 
And she must completely reinvent herself again. In the new world, she wants to finally escape Europe's restrictive conventions and be free. It doesn't matter if this is true or purely fictional. It sounds so right. You tell everything so well that it sounds like it's true. Shall I dance for you, Charles? <laughs> to not be afraid of yourself and to have sufficient confidence in your own mind is what Lola demands in her biography. As a woman with willpower, she wants to be able to ignore social barriers and she had the courage to make the whole world a stage. That is Lola Montes. Lola writes a bestseller in the United States about the art of female seduction. Charles Ware's play Lola Montez in Bavaria is a big success on Broadway. Lola dies in New York at the age of 39 years old. Ludwig I of Bavaria never fell in love again. <laughs> 